Declaration of Independence. We're looking at not so much the historical angle of the Declaration of Independence today, but more the political philosophical angle of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, the Declaration of Independence is an occasioned writing, but also takes an opportunity to speak to larger philosophical issues. Now, what I mean by an occasioned writing is there was a specific circumstance uh, in which the declaration was written, and it was written for a particular purpose to declare uh, independence from Britain. But it also spoke to a larger audience, a longer lasting audience, and larger issues of the role of liberty, freedom, government, rights in general. And so it is a must for understanding American political philosophy, like it or not, uh, the Declaration of Independence is uh, famously the one of the most influential documents in American history. Although it doesn't establish a government, that's a common misconception. It actually uh, defines what Jefferson and others who agreed with it defines what they think the role of government ought to be and how Britain uh, of the time doesn't seem to match that as many concepts in it that Americans are familiar with today. And just to put it into some perspective, Americans celebrate a holiday around the Declaration of Independence, uh, but they do not celebrate a holiday uh, around the Constitution. Uh, now there may be, you know, September 17th is the Constitution Day, and we have it. That being said, that cultural fact that we celebrate the 4th of July, but don't celebrate the institution of a larger, more powerful national government with the Constitution may indicate to us a little bit of the, the rebellion that is that is baked into the American culture. Uh, if you ask a lot of Americans, well, at first, if you ask other people from other countries, uh, what is what is unique about their country, their, their nation, their state, uh, people in France or Spain or Britain, uh, they may refer to their history, their kings, their art, their architecture, uh, their their culture, their music, lots of different things with that. Americans typically will refer to their values or system of government if asked what is unique about their country. And they'll say things like freedom. And now some people condescendingly, condescendingly say, oh, well, Canada has freedom, England has freedom. But the fact that Americans focus in on freedom, independence, liberty, and rights, or the system of government that we have under a constitution, ought to tell us something about what Americans value and think is important. Now, they may say other things. They may say capitalism. They may say the free market. They may say the hamburger. They may say the mall. I mean, who, who knows? But <clears throat> that is significant. It does... Uh, it is somewhat unique that Americans identify that. And it's not to say that other places don't have those things. It's just that Americans have a particular focus on those areas. Uh, so to talk about the Declaration of Independence, I like this uh, meme that was George Washington talking about uh, Brexit, you know, going on now, but eventually may become obsolete to this discussion. I may delete it out of this PowerPoint eventually, but it, uh, it says, I liked Brexit the first time when it was called the Declaration of Independence. In other words, the secession or independence movement of the British exit, when the British are exiting from the European Union, is, is built on kind of the American principle, started with the Declaration of Independence, that free people have a right to separate themselves. Uh, and form their own government. Now, that idea seems to have gone across the Atlantic Ocean to Britain, and they have applied uh, that principle. But it is kind of a uh, secession has been around for a long time, or separation has been around a long time. But it is kind of an American thing. Uh, now, this is independence 
Hall in Philadelphia, where the Constitution was discussed and uh, voted on and implemented. And where this takes place, the context in which this takes place is the Continental Congress, who is sending representatives of men from each colony to Philadelphia to discuss their reaction to what they see as the overreach of the British. The British have been quartering soldiers in many of their homes. Uh, the British have been trying, will later try to take their, their guns and the Americans, especially in Boston, will fight back at Lexington and Concord. Uh, the British taxation, not the amount, but the, the method in which they are being taxed, they believe to be unconstitutional according to the British constitution that said if you taxed people, that they had to be represented in parliament, which the colonies were not. Also, the, the trade restrictions are making it very difficult for people to carry on business, and Britain had looked the other way with the trade restrictions. Um, also, they're being governed by, uh, in their minds, a, a distant government over which they have no say. Uh, the government has no understanding of their local situation, their local culture, their local religion, their local needs. And so they prefer to govern themselves. And in their minds, especially an area like Virginia, which the first colony in Virginia is Jamestown in 1607, 170 years later in 1776 is looking with disdain and resentment upon the idea that the British should govern them from 3,000 miles away when they've basically been left on their own for over 100 years. And so this begins to create more friction and neither side is either uh, evil or good in this uh, American Revolution. A lot of it is, is misunderstanding. There are British who are on the sides of the American. Uh, there are Americans who do bad things to the British loyalists. There, uh, so there's. it's not a matter of a fight between good versus evil. This is a fight of colonies against uh, the original creator of those colonies, which almost always happens at some point. Here are myths of the Declaration of Independence that are very common. I call these the what my teacher told me. And some of them have fact, but it's mi mixed with um, errant material or the wrong kind of idea of what was actually going on with the Declaration of Independence. So we kind of have to undo, unfortunately, a lot of wrong thinking before we get into the document itself. So myths about the Declaration of Independence. One, the Declaration created our nation couple problems with that. The Declaration uh, did not create anything. The Declaration is just that. It is, a, it is a declaration or a statement, but it doesn't legally create anything. It's not a legally binding document, nor did it create a nation. The United States uh, that we think of today did not exist in this time. What you had was 13 colonies who over time refused to unite with one another. They, they even were suspicious of uniting in a confederacy. And Virginians did not see themselves as Americans insofar as they, they recognize they're Americans on the American continent. But it was very rare to hear the idea of that, that they were one America or one nation. Virginians viewed themselves as Virginians. Uh, people from Pennsylvania viewed themselves as Pennsylvanians. Georgians viewed themselves as Georgians. It was not as if, and, and, and they even regarded each other with, with a fair amount of suspicion. You need to think of these as if they are almost, thir they're British, but almost 13 different countries with 13 different cultures, several different governments that are operating there. And so it's not one nation. Even after the American Revolution, they are 13 independent states, or we may even think of them as, as countries, even though state means an independent political government. Uh, they are not a nation. Now, the confusion is, and the way that American story is often told, the kind of narrative, is that they were always one, and their oneness preceded the revolution, and that their oneness preceded the Constitution, and the Constitution recognized that they were one people and that they ought to have one national government. Uh, 
But that's not how Americans uh, thought of themselves at the time. They thought of themselves with regard to and loyalty to, in most cases, their own local colony and later state government, not as one nation. Now, the confusion is our Pledge of Allegiance has said since the 1920s or 30s, whenever it was written, that we are one nation under God, indivisible, meaning you can't divide up the nation. But that's not what the United States uh, was originally intended to be, one uh, nation with one central government. But that's often what people think the Declaration created, and it's not. Uh, the Declaration created America. Again, these colonies existed for over 100 years in some cases, and the Declaration did not bring anything new into existence. It only declared, uh, as Ben Franklin said, something that was already a fact. Uh, and that's what the only thing that changed is that the British colonies came now to recognize themselves as states, meaning independent political governments who did not need the permission of another government to exist, make laws, make decisions over themselves. So just like Britain didn't have to get France's permission to come into existence, they're saying we no longer recognize Britain as our government, but we recognize Massachusetts as our government, or New Hampshire as our government, or New York as our government, depending on where people live. So the Declaration did not create America. In addition to that, the Declaration gave us our first government. The Declaration does not spell out a plan for government or a mandate for government or any laws whatsoever. It's a statement of grievances against Britain, of political philosophy of what a, a right government should do and not do. And then it's, it's a statement of separation from Britain, but it is not a formation of an American government, of a single American government. It is only a general statement expressing in a general term the desire of the 13 states, and they left it to Thomas Jefferson. In fact, there is more than one Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence itself did not leave Britain. There had to be how many Declarations of Independence? There had to be 13, because each state had, declare, had to declare independence. Virginia led the way, and Virginia as one of the largest states, most powerful states, most respected states, Virginia had to get permission first, and they declared independence before July 4th. They declared independence, I believe, on, Ju on June 29th, 1776. And so each state had to declare independence. Now, they kind of sought an umbrella under one voice written by Thomas Jefferson and edited by others. But really, the, the Declaration does not even leave Britain. It is just a statement generalizing what the states represent at the time, what they say, are saying and doing at the time. Uh, but just because Thomas Jefferson wrote a document did not, and, and even just because some state representatives signed it, did not mean that the states had left Britain until their own state governments made that final determination. And then lastly, the Declaration led to the Constitution. It's another myth. They are different documents with fundamentally different purposes. The Declaration is much more radical. It's not as if the Declaration is the, the stepping stone to the Constitution and that one flows naturally into the other. The Declaration is a challenge to the large central government of Britain and a declaration of separation from that government. The Constitution brings in a large central government that's actually going to be very powerful and in many ways more powerful than Britain ever was. And in many ways, it's going to tax more than Britain ever did. So they, you have with one, Brit, uh, with the Declaration, you have more revolution. With the Constitution, you have more counter-revolution or the establishment 
of a more powerful central government over the states, which is at odds with what the Declaration is about. The Declaration is about the independence of the 13 states, not bringing them together under one government. The Constitution is about an agreement between the states with different philosophies on this, but, uh, but one government that will, will operate according to the framework written in the Constitution. So they're, they're different documents with different purposes, uh, sort of moving in different directions even. Uh, so we, we associate them together as if they're one thing. I even have on my wall here, the Constitution, the Declaration, and the Bill of Rights. Uh, but they're not all related together, except in so far as they have to do with their important documents in American history. But again, the Declaration has no laws or framework for government, but the Constitution does. That's the Constitution's less philosophical, more laying out the framework for a government, and the, the Declaration's more philosophical and occasional, meaning it was on a specific occasion that was written for a reason, and it doesn't lay out any laws or framework for government. So that's to, to kind of undo and kind of deprogram a lot of, of what we're uh, trained to think. Even I have been trained to think this way about the Declaration um, because I, I often was reading it for what I was expecting rather than for reading it for what it actually says and in its historical context. Uh, so that is some warning for us to actually read documents for what they're saying rather than I expect it to say this, therefore I'm going to try to fit it into my uh, mindset instead of reading it truly with, with an open mind to understand what it's saying, like it or not, agree with it or not. Uh, so that's the, the myths about the Declaration. Next time we will move on to uh, the purpose of the Declaration and uh, its political philosophy with regard to rights, liberties, uh, and also the issues that come with that and the, the challenges that uh, come with making those statements in the society in which they were made.